Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. Um, so at this point, we should, in theory, be able to test connectivity bidirectionally between, say, Charlie 12 on the SD-WAN side and our legacy branch. Um, so let's take a look at Bally again so I figure out which, which IP to try. Um, let's see. Whoops. So let's try to connect to 10.9.9.1.1. Okay, there you go, 10.9.9.1.1. And then let's look at Charlie and see what's on the service side. Okay, so 10.1.1.2. Now, branch one, we're using VRRP. So 10.1.1.1 is the VRRP address for the service side. Uh, and then, of course, uh, this, this particular router is using 10.1.1.2 in the VPN. So let's try this. Trace route. Or DRF. So because we're doing it in the service VPN, we have to use we have to specify the VPN or the VRF. And we could source it or not, but I will just for completeness. And then hopefully that will work. I should have said numeric. Okay, trace is complete. Now it's not 100% obvious from uh, this specific output what happened, so we'll have to probably trace it back a little bit. Uh, okay, the VMAN is checked in and it kind of messed me up a little bit on the, kind of shook my train of thought there for a second. But um, so, so let's trace this back. So Charlie 12 is connected to multiple transports through a TLOC extension. So because it's connected through a TLOC extension and has multiple uh, connectivity, not just through MPLS, but also through the Metro E and the INET, and then the data center side has those, those connectivities as well, uh, something like a trace route or, or user traffic with no policy will we'll use ECMP or equal cost multipathing to get there. So it looks like in this case, when we did our trace route, it shows an egress over the INET as the uh, one of three transports to choose. And the reason I, I can tell that is because the dot 10 octet. So uh, if we look back at our diagram, which we will here shortly, uh, dot 10 is the third octet, and that is for Charlie 10, which is the internet. So that's how I can tell. So we hit the internet transport. Uh, the next thing we hit looks like was data center one, I can tell that because it's 10.100, which is data center one. So this is the service side of data center one. And then it bounced through the um, WAN block or Chick-fil-A and then hit DQ and then MPLS. And then ultimately it, uh, we didn't get that last hop it looks like, but it, it, it ultimately gets to ballet that way. So it, so it goes back basically the same way it came through, which is, which is good. That's what we want to, what we want to see. So from a design perspective, when we're talking about migrating legacy sites, we need to be careful about a redistribution because redistribution is where we can introduce routing loops. And so I generally would suggest from a, a strategy standpoint that when we're talking about redistribution, or sorry, when we're talking about migration, first of all, we have to decide where we're migrating and we need to make sure that we're not doing, you know, 10,000 different kinds of, of levels of redundancy for migration. Two is probably plenty. We need to make sure we're, using, we're creating a path that isn't going to loop around inside the service side and, and go from SD-WAN to underlay to, you know, and so on and so forth back. So we generally want to pick a site that has connectivity to multiple transports, uh, or rather at least to the SD-WAN and also to the transports that the legacy site has. And then we're going to be careful with our redistribution. I would recommend doing something like a one-way redistribution, if at all possible, and say, so redistribute one way like we did here, and then just do something like network statements to advertise into the underlay. Uh, aggregate where needed, just in case there's any possible way that a loop might happen. Uh, more specific prefixes will always live on the side that you want them to live on. Okay, so I think that covers our redistribution. Let me go back to the diagram just one more time to, to kind of review here, and then we'll close it up. All right, so since we saw a lot of CLI there, I just wanted to recap a little bit uh, before we 
close it up here just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, so first of all, again, ballet, normal service routing, just advertising routes to the MPLS provider, right? MPLS provider sends the routes to DQ. DQ is using selective filtering, sends it into EIGRP, so Chick-fil-A will learn it. Chick-fil-A learns it and also sends it to the SD-WAN routers as an EIGRP external route. Okay, yeah, uh, SD-WAN routers, again, Bravo 5, Bravo 6, but really, if you be, want to be complete, right? Um, or rather, also Bravo 7 and Charlie 5, because we have two uh, we have two ways to get in, right? Pro and DQ. All four SD-WAN head router, head-end routers at the DCs will advertise the vSmart. Again, vSmart, right? They'll advertise the vSmart. vSmart route reflect. Take those routes in. Uh, associate with them with the T locks on which it learned those routes and, as, and then reflect those routes out to the branches that way. So each branch, each branch will have routes to all four DC head ends basically over all available transports that are allowed to, to, to uh, for them to use to come back. So all the real magic of the underlay overlay routing happens at the point of entry from at the point of, of, of taking it out of the underlay and, and injecting it into the overlay and vice versa. So really kind of our linchpin routers here are DQ and Pro in this setup. Now, if we assumed also that, say, uh, the legacy site were connected to Metro E, then we'd have to include Duncan and Duck, right? And then we would have to do uh, just basic. Well, since they don't talk to each other, there'd be no, there'd be no further filtering to be done, probably, that would be necessary. Uh, we would just... So, so again, assuming that, you know, the legacy site had multiple transports, when we bring it in again, say like, say, say we bring it in from Duncan and Duck into EIGRP, we could do ECMP if we wanted to, but more likely we'd want to do some pinning or something like that, right? So we would adjust the metrics on DQ and Duncan for those routes, those underlay routes, so that we could choose which transport uh, we were going to send and receive over because, you know, ECMP is great. Some apps don't like it and and uh, and don't like the out of, you know the potential out of order packets. And when we start talking about multiple transports, multiple providers, that's when we're really starting to think to worry about you know out of order packets and stuff like that. Especially because this is all you know again underlay. This is this is there's it's not end to end IPsec or anything like that, right? Um, so that's the that's kind of the last design consideration to think about when we're talking about underlay overlay uh, migration design that I can think of, at least associated with this particular topology. So uh, I hope this has been somewhat helpful. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. Hopefully this will help you with your own designs and your own migration strategies. Uh, as always, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment below, thumbs up, smash that like button, whatever, whatever it is the YouTubers are saying these days. And uh, we'll see you next time.